Hey there everyone, this is Danielle, uh, with my first thoughts on Korg Gadget for the Nintendo Switch. Uh, this isn't really a game. Uh, it's, as you can see, it says there, Music Production Studio. Uh, Korg is a fairly well-known brand in the music industry. If you look at their website, let's bring that up. You can see they make, like, various synthesizers and instruments and stuff like that, and... Basically, uh, they have software called Core Gadget, which is music production software, and they apparently made a Switch version of it, so... Uh, let's see if it's any good, I guess. Uh, okay. Okay, well, this is very simple, I suppose. Uh, that sounds fine, I guess. Uh, I guess I'll create a new song. Uh, okay, so there's a bunch of different synthesizers I can choose from here. Uh, I guess let's try the starting one. I don't really know what to expect here. I haven't used this at all. Okay, so... This little grid here is time, basically, and I can put down beats on these different... Neat. It's easy enough to use, I suppose. It kind of reminds me of the thing in Mario Paint. Like, this is obviously... A little less, uh, fun and silly than that one, a bit more professional, but it's a very similar idea, I think. You can just chain up or something or other. A little bit of... I'm not sure if I can ex extend it beyond this. It says track one, scene one, so I'm guessing if I go back and... Yeah, I, I think I can have more tracks and... Then I can have more instruments at the same time. Okay, and I can have more scenes as well. I'm guessing this one plays after the other one. Okay, um... Okay, so I can, I can clear clip like that. Okay, I'm pressing X gives me this big menu with loads of other options, so I can customize lots of things that way. Uh, let's add another track and try one of those other instruments. Uh, let me see. So yeah, that's, that's, that's a drum machine, so I only get like drum sounds from that, but this one can do normal sounds, so standard keyboard sounds, brass, strings, and synth sounds. So I probably want to make one of those, put it in over here. Okay, then I get an actual piano. Alright, so... This is fun. <laughs> this is a little confusing, honestly.
I'm not quite sure how switchy this is. I know there's something that uses the motion control, but I'm not quite sure how you get to that. Um... I'm also not sure which of these notes correspond to which keys. The grids don't quite line up properly, so it's a little confusing. Oh, actually, I can scroll this very far. Alright. Oh my. <laughs> uh, I'm guessing this one's really middle C. Maybe that one's middle C. Hmm. I've got two keys here, so presumably the... I guess the ones with lines through them are like the black keys, maybe? But you've got two adjacent ones here. It doesn't seem quite seem to line up, that's really confusing. Um, I probably need to look at the instructions. This, this thing does have instructions, I can... ooh. Okay, so if you come up here, you can actually customize... Oh wow, lots of stuff. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> um, I'm gonna back to this one then. Yeah, it didn't sound right. I'm trying to get like a normal chord, but I don't know which which ones are which on this display because of the way it's lined up. It's very confusing. Hmm. I have better music understanding than I do, I think. <laughs> um, let's try changing this to another gadget and just try some of the others out. Uh, classical design is optimized. Is that lead sounds or lead sounds? Probably lead sounds. Uh, let's try switching to a Berlin and see what that does. Well, it looks pretty similar. confused about the piano grid on the left there. Maybe if I back out of this and have a look at the... Ooh! Okay, that's if I press plus I get this screen. If I press minus, what do I get? Oh, hello! I get this thing. I can pitch bend by tilting my Joy-Con. <laughs> that's kind of funny. If I click the, yeah, if I click the, um, right, left analog, that's the same as pressing, uh, pressing X, that doesn't, just doesn't do anything different. Uh, ZL, uh, doesn't do anything. ZR puts me in, like, a select mode, so that's handy. Uh, ooh, hello. If I hold L, I get these options. If I hold R, I get these options. Oh, I can talk to other players because this is a multiplayer mode. Okay, cool. I'm still not sure how to, I, I guess, do notes in the piano roll mode, which is very confusing. Uh, system. User manual. Let's have a look at the instructions, see what I can figure out. Or gadget piano roll screen. This is clearly just like a web page that isn't actually designed to show at 1080p, which is a bit awkward. <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, let me see. Pressing the A button places a note at the current cross location. You can the, adjust the length of the note. Yeah. Grid eight eight hundred sixteenth note resolution. Okay, so there's a grid option in the menu. Okay, triplets. That sounds useful. We'll see. Automation. Select range and do display scale tones. 
Notes that are not members of the selected scale are displayed with diagonal lines. Oh, okay, okay. So that's why, that's what I was crossing out some of them. So if I want to get a scale, I just have to select the other ones. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, that make that that makes more sense now. I get it. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yeah, that would be C four, and that that would be a C sharp there. Then you've got D, and you've got D sharp. What scale is it set to then? Scale key settings. Dorian. Chromatic scale, that's all the keys. Ionian. I don't I don't know what that means. <laughs> I'm not I'm not a, an expert on this sort of thing. If I turn on triplets, what happens? Oh, I tried to turn them on but it didn't do anything. Uh one one. Whoa! Oh I see what that did. Okay, so if I go back to Okay, so that, that changes the size of these these notes, so I can make bigger and smaller notes more easily. Okay. So that's C. And then that's D. And that would be D sharp. And this would be E, I guess. I guess I sort of know what I'm doing, but I kind of don't. <laughs> I'm having fun though. Um, oh yeah, this sounds great. <laughs> another one. I'm having fun, this is awesome. What else have we got? Synthesizer gadget with a classical design. That's what I'm using right now. Uh, let's try one of these others. Polyphonic synthesizer gadget. Classic vintage design and sound. It's painstaking analog emulation provides analog sound with warmth and presence. That sounds nice. Let's try it. Change that into a different gadget. Uh, I believe these two are DLC, which is a little annoying. Um, especially since they're things you might really want, because this one's inspired by the Mega Drive, which is also known as the Sega Genesis to a lot of people, and you know, they're very popular. Uh, and this one's, I mean, based on arcade games, you probably would want those if you were trying to play the Nintendo Switch version of this. Oh, 
or not? Hang on. Hmm. Can you extend this one while having that one keep playing the same? Or maybe. QR code, really? The Switch doesn't have a camera, so that's kind of a weird feature. I guess you just need to make another scene, and then... I guess I'll tell this, this one to loop? I guess I'll copy this one and then paste it here. Yeah, that looks out okay. Okay, that's not too tricky to use. Do, do. <laughs> uh, let's try another one. Uh, that's another drum machine, I think. Yeah. Uh, how about this one? Bass, analog, vintage. Drums, analog. Uh, variable phase modulation sensor, subdue gold body. Mm. <laughs> Ambient or chill vibe. Let's try this one, or I can 8 bit game sounds. That sounds pretty cool. Hang on, let's just, let's just, um, Let's start another scene and just work on this down here so we can avoid listening to the other stuff. I wonder if we can tell it to just play this one. Yeah, you can You can tell it to mute clips, so we could probably just tell it to only play this one for the moment, but... Yeah, it sounds, it sounds very 8-bitty. Uh, let's see what settings this thing has. Oh, you can choose the waveform shape! Oh, look at that! Oh, that's cool! Oh, that's really cool. It's, it's like it's like you're programming the um, waveform properties on a SID chip or something. That is really nice. I like that. There's actually a jump button over there too for some reason. I don't know what that does. <laughs> Oh, wow. Oh, there's all these presets for different popular sounds. Nice. <laughs> I 
I'm having fun even though I'm terrible at music. <laughs> That's all that matters. Oh, that sounds cool. I like that slide. <laughs> oh my goodness. I think higher pitch sounds sound better with this particular one. There's more views as well. What do we got here? We got Mixer. I haven't looked at this one yet. Ooh. Okay, so I can adjust how each track's volume and stuff work. Neat. This looks pretty flexible. Like, if you want to make some music using thin synthesizers of various kinds, this looks really good. I'm not sure what happens to recordings when you've done them. System. Hmm. Oh, okay, so you can scan these QR codes into, say, the Android version of the app, because Core Gadget is available on Android. And then they'd have the same like program that you'd made on the on the um switch version. That's pretty cool. I like that. Uh, I don't know how this record option works. I don't see what that really does, but uh, I imagine you could record like I can record stuff pretty easily, like a song out of this because I have I have a capture card and it can it can grab the audio and all that. But I'm not sure how you would do that if you didn't have an appropriate capture card. Um. I suppose you'd have to just... I, I suppose you'd want to transfer it to another version of the game and do it there. Or because the software. It's not really a game. That's what that does. Control settings just opens that. It does say I can record, so... I guess I'll tell it to record like this. And... I don't know where that's recording, if anywhere. Because <laughs> it said it was recording, but I, I don't know what that just did. Is there anything in my album, maybe? Nothing new. Hmm. Okay, I don't know how that part works, but, um... From what I've seen, Core Gadget on the Switch looks really cool. Um, I haven't tried out the multiplayer features, which it has, which sounds pretty impressive. Um, you can make songs online with other players, which is pretty cool. Uh, uh, let's see. And yeah, it looks like a pretty capable tool for making electronic music, if that's the kind of thing you're into. Um, it's pretty fun to use, it's not especially difficult. I got a little confused, but the manual looks pretty descriptive and helpful, so not something to worry about too much. Um, I'm a little annoyed that some of the um, synths are separate DLC because the game, like, 
not the game, the, the software already costs a decent amount, and having to buy parts of it additionally at that point seems a bit excessive, but I guess that's the industry practice these days. What are you going to do? Uh, I'm not sure what these options do. Maybe... Maybe maybe it's like like a challenge. Try to make a song in in a certain amount of time. Like, is it gonna cut off when I get to that amount of time? Then it, I can't do anything else. It's still going. I don't understand what. I had to set to half a minute, so. Maybe I had to sit to a minute. <laughs> hmm. Let's just wait till a minute elapses and see what happens. Time up. Okay, I'm not sure what the point of that is. I guess the idea is if you wanted to make songs competitively, you could set it to probably more than one minute, but you could, you know, create a couple of songs within a time limit. I see who makes the better song based on, you know, subjective opinions, because that's what music is. It's all subjective, or at least most of it is. Um, I don't know what the point of that is. <laughs> uh, but this, uh, this tool overall, it looks really cool to me, and I'm glad to have checked it out. Um, I think it's a fun thing to have and to have existing. And I would recommend looking looking at it, especially if you're interested in electronic music and synthesizers and that sort of musical production, because it looks like it's a very capable uh, tool for doing that sort of thing. Uh, although you might prefer to get it on Android or some other platform rather than on the Switch, because, um, you know, you might not want to get a Switch for this when you could use your smartphone or something instead. Um... But, you know, if you've already got a Switch and you feel like making some electronic music on it, then this looks pretty capable. I think it also works with the touchscreen. I can't test that while capturing because I have to unplug from the dock and that stops the capturing and blah, 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 blah. But I think it does work with the touchscreen. So if, say, you got the Mario Maker 2 stylus, which I did, uh, that would be pretty cool to do things that way. Um, or you could choose a finger because it is a modern sort of touchscreen that will work fine with a finger. Um... But yeah, so that's core gadget for the Nintendo Switch. It looks pretty cool. Um, I'm impressed with it, and it took a little bit of figuring out, but I had some fun, and I made some 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 nonsense. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Um, yeah, that's it for this time. Uh, bye.